had a Muslim challenge you to produce a contradiction in the Quran. They base this on chapter 4 verse 82, which says, Do they not consider the Quran carefully? Had it been from other than Allah, they would surely have found therein much contradictions. Or, as Muhammad Hijab puts it, Number two, we say that, look, the Quran itself has falsification challenges. It, it actually says, if there's any, if you if you believe that this book is from other than God, then please try and find it, or you would have found in it many contradictions. So there's many of them. there to try and find contradictions in the Quran. I have falsified the Quran there, on a very high level. Do it now, that's fine. The inimitab- there are many problems with this verse itself. For one, there's ambiguity. What does it mean that you'll find much contradictions? How many constitutes many? The Quran has around 6,200 verses. If 10 of those are contradictory, is that many? If 100 contradict, is that many? If 1,000 contradict, is that many? How many is many? The ambiguity of the challenge almost does the exact opposite of what Muhammad Hijab claimed. The Quran itself has falsification challenges. It does it though? Unless the word many is specified, it almost makes the challenge unfalsifiable. And there's another problem. Putting aside the fact that the Quran nowhere tells us how many contradictions would constitute many contradictions, it seems to assume that just because a book has no contradictions, then that book must be from God. But that's just simply not true. Anyone can produce a book that is free of contradictions. Take a simple book on mathematics, for example, and see if you can find anything contradictory in it. According to the Quran, if there aren't any, then it must be from God. Now putting those problems to the side, does the Quran contain contradictions? I'm going to present what I believe to be one of the most obvious contradictions in the Quran. In chapters 19 verses 17 to 21 and 3 verses 45 to 47, it presents us with the story of the virgin birth. Mary asked the question, how can I have a son seeing as no one has touched me? And the reply she got was, it is easy for your Lord. Here we have Mary stating that it's not possible for her to have a son because no one has touched her. In other words, she is saying that because she has no mate, no consort, no partner, that it's not possible for her to have a child. But then she's told that it's something easy for Allah. In other words, for Allah, it doesn't matter if you have a consort, a husband, partner, he can perform a miracle and you can have a child without that. This means that for Allah, someone can have a child without having a partner. Then if we go to chapter 6 verse 101 in the Quran, it says, The creator of the heavens and the earth, how should he have a son, seeing that he has no consort? And he created all things, and he has knowledge of everything. Here we have the same Quran teaching that it's impossible for Allah to have a child unless he has a consort. And actually in the Arabic it says sahiba, which means girlfriend. Does Allah believe in sex before marriage? Anyway. The verse is clearly teaching that Allah needs a partner in order to have a child. But in the other passages, 1917-21 and 345-47, it teaches that Allah is perfectly capable of performing a miracle so that Mary can have a child without having a partner, and that this is easy for him. How can it be that on one hand, it's easy for Allah to produce a child without there being any partner for Mary, but for Allah, who Muslims say is the greatest, himself, cannot have a child unless he has a partner. This is a huge contradiction. And if we're to believe that a book that has contradictions in it cannot be from God, then therefore, based on this alone, the Quran cannot be from God. Thanks for watching and God bless you.